Hello everyone, this is Jason Merkel with Horizon Hobby and I'm here today to talk about a setup and overview of the E-Flight V22 Osprey VTOL. So you guys have probably seen this, this is a very exciting product for us, it's our first scale VTOL model and it's really the one that everybody's been asking for. Everybody announced, when well, we announced the other products said, hey, when are you guys going to do a V22? When are you going to do a V22? So we took what we learned from our other VTOL aircraft and uh, we had to do a combination of some, some aero things and some software things to get this to work well and in the end we got the product to function quite well. Um, you know, that said, it's a little bit different than setting up a typical airplane or multi-rotor, so I want to go over a little bit of that with you. Uh, if you haven't flown a multi-rotor before or an airplane before, we wouldn't necessarily recommend this. Uh, we strongly recommend having at least some airplane experience and some multi-rotor and or helicopter experience. Uh, but that said, you guys can kind of see here how it comes out of the box. So it comes out of the box basically fully assembled. You don't have to do any assembly. The landing gear does not come installed, so you have the choice of installing it or not installing it. Some people are going to fly over grass or maybe just inside the house in the multi-rotor mode. Uh, you don't have to put the landing gear on. It looks really cool with this kind of retracted gear look. Uh, that said, at the same time, I really like the idea of installing the landing gear, which you guys see here. It just slides into the slots. It pops into place. You can see the orientation uh, clearly in the photographs. The nose wheel uh, is castering. It has to be kind of angled backward here. But I like having the landing gear installed because in multi-rotor mode, you do have yaw control. In airplane mode, by the way, you do not have yaw control, um, so you do, or it has very limited yaw control with thrust vectoring, so you really can't taxi around as an airplane. Uh, but that said, in the multi-rotor mode, you can easily taxi. You guys can see that the nose wheel will caster there, which is really cool. Uh, so you can kind of do some nice rolling takeoffs and kind of rolling in landings. It's just a different uh, experience than some of our other VTOL aircraft offered. So uh, installing landing gear is very, very simple. Uh, it does come with the decal sheet, so you guys can customize the trim scheme as you see fit. You've got the different branches of the military here, different tail art, uh, you have different numbers that you can put on. So we wanted to make sure that everybody had the opportunity to potentially customize and, and personalize their model. Uh, you guys can see it does have a couple of markings on it already. It's already painted in a multicolor finish, so it's a little lighter on the bottom than it is on the top. Uh, looks relatively uh, scale overall, and uh, I think it's really exciting. It just looks very different than your kind of typical convergence in the air, which is really, really exciting. So uh, we're going to go over how to set up a new model in the transmitter, uh, and then how to bind it. And then we're going to give you a couple of little bit of tips uh, before you go out and pro probably make your first flight. Uh, one thing I'll point out is that all you need to fly this is a standard six-channel programmable radio. You don't need anything exotic. So we've got a DX6E here, which is a, a great uh, example of a transmitter to use. Uh, more channels, of course, no problem. Problem, but all you really need to do is program one three position switch. That's all it takes to fly this aircraft. We actually simplified the flight modes from the original convergence, which had separate stability and acro modes, both in airplane and multi rotor flight. And then the mini convergence, we actually had both setups out there. A lot of people did the two switch one, and that got a lot of people confused and, and kind of frustrated. So in this case, we basically only use a single three position switch to switch between multi rotor stability mode. There is no multi motor. Acro mode. There, there's no way to do a hovering and then do flips and tumbles. Obviously, that's not scale anyway. This aircraft really isn't optimized for that. So we've got a multi rotor stability mode. Then you flip the position to the middle and you then transition to airplane stability mode. So it'll automatically rotate the nacelles. And in stability mode, in both multi rotor and airplane flight, you have pitch and bank angle limits, so you can't get upside down. So that's important. It also has self leveling. So to go back to level. Now, I know a lot of guys are going to say, well, I don't want that in airplane mode, and no problem. So you can transition to airplane stability mode, and you can immediately switch to airplane acro mode. In fact, you can just pull the switch all the way through if you want. You know, that said, I strongly recommend if this is a first VTOL model for you, or if you're not comfortable flying VTOLs, or, uh, you know, you haven't made that transition a whole bunch, I do not recommend switching all the way through to acro mode. I would go straight to airplane stability mode, fly around a circuit, then switch to acro mode. Same thing when you're kind of going back into multi-rotor flight. I'd switch back to airplane stability mode, take a lap or two, then switch to transition into multi-rotor mode. So we'll get into a little bit more of that here later on. So the first thing is when you set up a transmitter, obviously you're gonna to go to a new model. And we're gonna show you guys this hopefully on the screen here. So I'm gonna turn on the transmitter. I've already programmed a V22 model in this particular one, but we're gonna walk you through the setup process of a new model. So I'm gonna push my two buttons here so I'm in the menu for uh, setting up a new model. I'm gonna go to add a new model, as you guys can see here. We're gonna create a new model. And the nice thing is there aren't a lot of steps involved. Now, the first thing normally I would do personally here is I would actually name my model. Now I'm gonna skip that to save us some time and effort here. I'm gonna to go to the main screen. So let's just assume this is, uh, you know, 17 Acro is my V22 Osprey. So you guys can see this is defaulted to a new model with a five minute timer. The very first thing that I'm gonna do is go into the main menu here. Uh, now in the manual, it does recommend setting up some dual rates and exponential. That is somewhat 
personal preference. So I'm actually not going to set that now. I'm just going to show you how to set up the standard flight modes and uh, the other functions. So the first thing that I'm going to go do is a throttle cut. Now, we strongly recommend using a throttle cut on a lot of electric aircraft. Not everybody does, and that's understandable. But if you do, uh, we recommend setting it up on this model so that way you can run the trim up a little bit higher. So when you're in multi-rotor flight, if you lower the throttle stick, it doesn't just fall out of the sky. And then when you land, you can hit throttle cut and then lower your throttle trim uh, to shut it off completely. So, you know, I'm gonna go to here and set this to, actually, I'm just gonna cheat here and flip the H switch. So on most of our setups for throttle cut, we recommend using this back right switch, the H switch. Uh, for guys that have flown helicopters, even multi-rotors, you know this is throttle hold. Uh, so for some airplane guys, you may use this for other things, but again, we recommend using H. Now you can set that to any switch you want, other than preferably B, because we're gonna use that for our flight modes. So now that I've set that and selected that, it's already gonna default to negative 130%, and uh, that is correct. So when I flip the switch toward me, throttle cut is active. When I flip it away from me, it's no longer active. So I'm going to scroll out of this, and then I'm going to go down here to the system setup menu. So I'm going to turn off the RF, no big deal. Uh, and then I'm going to scroll down here to channel assign. Now I'm going to scroll past the RX port assignments. That is already standardized. I'm going to scroll past this, and I'm going to go into the channel input configuration. Now, the flight modes of this aircraft are controlled by the gear channel. So I'm going to select the gear channel and then I'm going to, again, cheat and just flip the B switch. Now you can use whatever three position switch you would like, but we recommend using this top left switch on the left shoulder here. So I flip that, that's selected B. I'm gonna set aux one to H as well for throttle cut. So again, I cheated and just flipped that. Uh, basically that is it for the advanced setup, so to speak, you're pretty much done. Now. I'm going to get the air, uh, transmitter ready to bind to the aircraft. So I'm going to go into the bind menu and I'm going to select the bind box, but I'm not going to press the button yet because now I have to get the aircraft ready to bind. So I'm going to set that to the side. Uh, the battery that we've got here is a three cell 800 milliamp battery, just like our mini convergence uses. Uh, this is the E-Fly battery. We also have a Connexus battery that we recommend uh, that works very well. Uh, it doesn't really take a whole lot of power to fly this thing. It gets flight times four to eight minutes, so a 30C battery is more than enough for it. Uh, you do have to have a JST connector. That part's very important. And so the first thing you have to do is obviously remove the hatch cover there. And oh, by the way, you do have to install the hook and loop material inside the aircraft. Uh, we left that out. It is in the box, so you can choose which side that you put in the model and which side you put on the battery. But I'm gonna drop the battery inside here. And uh, the one important thing is that this binds a little differently than some of our other aircraft because there's no bind button, there's no bind plug. So the transmitter is ready to bind. It's not bound yet, it's not in bind mode. I'm going to plug in the battery. And then it takes roughly 10 seconds for the receiver to go into basically an auto bind mode. And so uh, right now we can kind of wait it out. Uh, there is a hatch on the bottom of the model where you can, actually you have to leave it stationary for that 10 seconds, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then once it's been 10 seconds, the orange light will start flashing on the serial receiver. And by the way, let me point that out really quickly. So we do sell a bind and fly basic version and a plug and play version. They both have a flight controller inside and they're only comp that flight control is only compatible with Spectrum serial receivers. So the bind and fly comes with the correct one, of course. The plug and play is compatible with the uh, 4648 uh, serial receiver in particular, which if you have an original convergence or a mini convergence or maybe a quad, you may already have one of those receivers around and that will work. Other brand receivers will not work. A standard receiver with patch cables will not work. It only connects through the serial portion. So now that it's been long enough, I can pop this hatch open on the bottom here and it might be hard to see, but uh, it is actually lighting up orange inside of there. You can see the flashing light. So we are in bind mode on the aircraft. Now, as a lot of people know from experience, you do have to have a little bit of separation. So I'm gonna move my transmitter away and then I'm gonna hit bind. And there we go. We've now bound. So now we'll initialize. To be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and turn throttle cut on. And now that it's bound, I can show you guys some of the functions. Now, first and foremost, when I've got the B switch all the way back, that's the zero position, that is multi-rotor stability mode. So basically the vertical, the hover mode, you guys can see the nacelles are up. That basically is showing you that it's ready to fly and take off vertically. And so if I flip the switch to the middle position, now it's going through the transition into airplane stability mode. Again, airplane stability mode is flying forward like an airplane, but we have pitch and bank angle limits. So you can't get upside down, you can't crash. Um, well, you can still crash, you just can't get upside down or, or usually out of control. Uh, and then when you let go of the sticks, it does go back to level. 
So airplane stability mode is good for a lot of people. When you trans make the transition through, I strongly recommend transitioning from multi-rotor stability, flying out in, in airplane stability mode, and making a lap or two, getting kind of gathered, then flip into acro mode. And in acro mode, it flies just like a normal airplane. You don't have any pitch and bank angle limits. You don't have any self-leveling. You can perform basic aerobatics like loops and rolls. Uh, some aerobatics we don't really recommend with this particular model. First off, not particularly scale. Uh, but that said, the airplane's not been optimized for, say, inver inverted flight or things like that. But you'll see in some of the videos that we have out there, point rolls and you know, kind of some basic aerobatics are no problem. Uh, and it does fly like a you know, kind of traditional aircraft. Uh, it doesn't have any, you know, really strange characteristics per se, but it is a little bit different. And that's why we recommend having some experience. So again, if I flip the switch to the third position here, oh, sorry, went the wrong way. If you go back to position two all the way through, now I'm in airplane acro mode. So airplane acro mode, I do have three axis gyros smoothing things out. Again, it's not self-leveling. I don't have pitch and bank angle limits, but I do have full control. So you guys will see here in the video, I've got you know, your typical elevator control, your typical aileron control, and that's basically typical. You do have a little bit of uh, a yaw control with differential thrust uh, in there. Uh, in st airplane stability mode, you do have some of that same control. You have a little bit lesser um, because, again, the pitch and bank angle limits and the self-leveling. And then I'm going to transition back to multi-rotor stability mode. You guys will see that. Now, something else I want to point out is that in the tuning of the flight performance of this aircraft, we had to spend a bit of time kind of learning about the aerodynamics of the airframe and then also the software. And one of the things that we had to do was introduce some kind of uh, uh, kind of a help in elevator control in particular in multi-rotor mode. So you'll notice if I use yaw control here, which basically uh, transitions the nacelles opposite of one another to induce yaw, uh, that's what happens in multi-rotor mode for kind of rudder control or yaw control. You can see it's relatively instantaneous, but the elevator, on the other hand, will not you'll notice it doesn't back up as far as it goes forward. And the reason for that is because this aircraft isn't really optimized to fly backwards. You can back up a little bit, but we've kind of maxed it out so that way you can't get going too fast backward in most cases. Now, it might depend if there's a, a lot of wind behind you, whether or not you can back up. Um, but in most cases, you'll have plenty of rearward control. But when you move the stick forward, you'll notice that as I move the stick, there's kind of like a delay in the response. And the reason for that is we slowed it down so you can't get transition from rear to forward or backward flight to forward flight too quickly and flip the airplane over or get it aerodynamically unstable. So watch out for that. Don't be alarmed. That control delay is normal. It's intentional. When you fly it, you won't even feel it. You won't even notice it at all. So I think that's really important to point out. So um, again, I think it's important that you have some experience flying a multi-rotor or helicopter so you can have some success flying into the multi-rotor or helicopter mode. I think you need to have experience flying in an airplane mode. If you've flown uh, a couple of airplanes, a couple of quads and heli successfully, I think you can fly this aircraft successfully, even if it's your first VTOL model. That said, I do strongly recommend having some VTOL flight experience. So for example, flying something like the original Convergence or the Mini Convergence, they fly a little bit different. But that said, having some experience with those will make this a better experience for you. And one thing I want to point out is, uh, for those that aren't familiar, our real flight simulator does have the Mini Convergence in it. There's two versions of the Mini Convergence in there. It has a setup with the two separate switches for acro mode and, and stability mode and airplane and multi-rotor. But we also have a version in there which has the three position switch that functions much like this. So you can practice flying a multi-rotor in that mode. I think that's uh, uh, really important to, to have in there as well. Uh, oh, also something I'll, I want to point out as well, really quick. I'm going to go back to airplane acro mode, and I'm going to point out that when you move the aileron stick, the ailerons, you might notice they stop a little soon, and that's just because of the programming that's in the flight control. Uh, that is standard. That is typical. So you'll notice, oh, I'm not getting full travel, or it's, it's, it's stopping. It's giving me full travel before I get to the endpoints. Don't worry. That is normal. It's been programmed that way. In flight, it, you won't feel any difference. Uh, there's some different reasons for that to happen, but we wanted to kind of point those things out so people aren't alarmed and looking at the manual and not seeing that mentioned or calling our product spark guys going, hey, there's something wrong with my aircraft. So all of these things that you guys are seeing are normal. Again, I think it's very important that you have some experience flying, again, airplanes and or, well, actually not and or, it's and quads and uh, multi-rotors or helicopters as well to succeed with flying this. So, you know, I know a lot of people have kind of cut their teeth on a convergence or a mini convergence as their first either VTOL and multi-rotor experience or first VTOL and airplane experience, and that was a bit much for a lot of guys. Uh, and then really quick, I'll mention about transitions. So, 
Uh, a lot of people struggle with the transition in particular, not only because when you're flying in a multi-rotor you have to be thinking to controls a little bit differently than as an airplane, but really it's the transition that kind of throws them off. And a lot of times people are moving sticks during the transition and you have some control during the transition. So if the airplane is, is going a little bit you know, towards an obstacle and, and it's transitioning and you want to go left, if you hold left it'll move a little bit to the left during the transition and then when it comes out of the transition, but that's the problem. If you continue to hold the stick over during the transition, transition and very little happens out of the transition a lot happens and that's when a lot of people get into trouble so the number one problem that I see is that the number two problem I see is not enough power so I do have throttle cut active got by the way guys but you really need to have at least you know roughly half to two-thirds throttle when you're transitioning from airplane to multi-rotor flight and then if you're in multi-rotor hover mode you really don't want to be descending when you switch into uh, airplane mode you really want to actually kind of be maintaining altitude, or in my case, I actually purposely bump the throttle up so it's climbing a little bit, and then I flip to transition. And then also, I don't transition from right in front of myself and start my transition there because I'll end up way on one side, whichever direction I'm going. I intentionally move down. Let's say the wind is blowing from right to left. I move down to my left. I start the transition, you know, 50 or so, 100 feet off my left shoulder, and that way it ends up out of the transition, not too uncomfortably far to my right into the wind. So transition into the wind, make sure you have enough power. That's very, very critical. And again, in multi-rotor, I recommend having maintained altitude power or slight climb power and then transition out. And then when you're coming back out of airplane flight, a lot of guys will tend to throttle back too far to where it'll stay in the air at a relatively low throttle setting or maybe even descend slightly. But then when you transition to multi-rotor flight, what happens is it automatically transitions and everything is smooth, but when it comes out of that, it drops the throttle down to the point that you had it at, and a lot of times it'll fall out of the sky, and that's when guys get into trouble. And again, it's very important, if you look at the manual, we talk about bringing the throttle trim up, so that way in multi-rotor flight, when you bring the throttle stick down, it doesn't shut the motors off. So you just wanna have the motors barely idling, and that's why that throttle cut is so important. So I can show you guys that really quickly. I'm just gonna bump the throttle trim up a little bit here. I'm gonna turn off my throttle cut. That's what you want. So when you drop the throttle all the way to the bottom, you want it to keep running. So that way it never falls out of the sky. Once the motor shut off in multi-rotor mode, you have no control. You don't want that to happen. So again, this is why throttle cut is somewhat important. And then after you ac activate throttle cut after you land, you wanna make sure to drop your throttle back to that neutral point uh, before you rearm and reinitialize again. So that's it. I think that covers some of the kind of most basic uh, setup tips. Also some of the tips uh, on some of the unusual or different activities that you might see the aircraft uh, do. And then also talk you a little bit through transition tips. Uh, and then hopefully down the road here, we'll have some other videos that show you guys this kind of firsthand. I think it's really important for people to see how easy the transition is when you let the aircraft do what it's supposed to do. When you have enough throttle, when you have enough space, and then when you actually are not manipulating the controls too much during and right after the transition period. So uh, be sure to check out the product page for more information on horizonhobby.com. Be sure to check our YouTube channel for more videos. And thank you.